For problems like this, where you have x raised to a power that's not the same as the index, and also it's not a multiple of the index, so in other words, 4 divided by 3 doesn't go on evenly. There, for this kind of problems, you're going to end up with some kind of radical with an x inside. And so these are done a little bit uh, differently. So we'll take a look at examples of, of this now. What we're first going to do is we're going to use the product property to break this up into two different radicals. So cube root of 256 and then the cube root of x to the fourth power. Now the 256, I need to figure out what power was that break down into. Now the way that we're going to do that is by using a factor tree. In other words, we're just kind of see a product of primes, prime numbers. So we're going to break this down. So if you're not sure what divides into this, the last number is even, so we know it can be divided by a two. So we divide it by a two, we'll get two and 128. We'll divide that by two and we'll get 64. And we just keep on going all the way down on this. Uh, 64, we can do eight times eight. And then that's two times four. And of course that can be broken down further as well. So we end up with a bunch of twos here. Let's count them all. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos, which means that we can write this as two to the eighth power. And then we'll just leave this as the cube root of X to the fourth. All right. So now the idea here is you want to come up with powers of three. So I want to break this up into two to the third, and I want to break this up into X to the third and see if I have anything left over. Now, eight divided by three, it goes in two times, but there'll be a remain remainder there. Now, the fact that it divides in two times tells me that I can do two of these to the third power, and there'll be one of them, uh, there'll be one left over with a power of two because that's the remainder. If you take eight divided by three, uh, you, it goes in twice with a remainder of two. So now if I multiply all this together, I would add the exponents and I would get two to the eighth uh, there. Now for the X's, I can do X to the third and then there'll be an X left over, X to the first power. If I multiply those and add the exponents, I'll get a fourth power there. So that's, I'm, I broke it all down into that. From here, what I'm gonna do is use the product property to separate all this. Now this is two squared here. I can just write that as a four. And I have the cube root of X to the third and then the cube root of just X to the first power. Now, every time I have a three and a three matches, that means that that's gonna go away. That's the inverse property working out there. So I have a two and then I have another two here. Cube root of four, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with. I get an X here. And then I get a cube root of X. So now I need to put all this together. Now I can, I can rearrange this and put the, the non-roots and the roots together, cube roots. And then I can just combine this. So the two times two and X, that's gonna be a, a four X right there. And then these two, I can put together as one by using the product property. So cube root, since they're both cube roots, that means I'll get a, a cube root. And then I just multiply the two things inside, so I'll get a 4x. So your answer here will be 4x, and that's times the cube root of 4x. And then that would be as far as we can go uh, with that one. So let's go on to the next example. All right, now this one here, we have square roots. So if you don't see an index in there, it's assumed that the index, it's automatically the index is two in this case. So any radical without an without index shown, it's automatically a radical two, okay, or square root. Now for this, since these are both the same, I'm actually gonna multiply that together by using the product principle and just put it over one, one big root. So if I take eight times 32, I'm gonna get 256. And if I add, and then this one, I'm just gonna leave it as X squared times X. And the reason why is because I wanna have this as a square so that it matches the little two that we have here. Now in the last problem, we did break down 256. So we just did that up here. 
And 256 is the same thing we said as 2 to the 8th power. So now I know that I can do the same thing here. I can put 2 to the 8th power inside there. And then I have x squared. And then I have x. And then, of course, I can break this down into the square root of 2 to the 8th, the square root of x squared, the square root of x. So using the product principle there. Now, because this 8, I can take the 8 and divide it by the index on the outside. So 8 divided by the 2 outside here will give me 2 to the 4th power. Now, for this, the square matches the 2 here, so those cancel. But remember, whenever there's an even root, that's going to turn into an absolute value of x. And I still have a square root of x left over here. Well, now this part, 2 to the 4th power is 16. So that's 16 absolute value of x times the square root of x, and then that would be your answer for that one. Okay, And we'll do one more here. All right, so this one, we have the, we have two different indexes here. So we can't just multiply those together like before because the product principle only works if the index is the same. So this one, we can't really do the same way. So instead, what we'll do is we'll, um, we're gonna try and break each of these down. So 81 is the same thing as nine times nine. And then that's gonna be three, three, and three, and three, which means that I can rewrite the, rewrite this as three to the fourth power, and that's X to the fourth. And then this one, the nine is the same thing as three times three. So this we can write as three squared and I have X squared. Now the problem with this first radical is that in order for me to, me to take something out of the radical, I have to have this the same power or higher as this index. So each of these are a fourth power, which means that I don't have enough of them to bring outside of the radical. So in this case, I can't do anything with this one. That's as far as I can go. The fifth root of the square root, the fifth root of eighty-one x to the fourth. That's it. I can't can't take anything out of that. However, the next one I can though, because this can be broken down into square root of three squared times the square root of x squared. There, and in this case, I would have first one I can't do anything with. Now this one. Uh, the square root of three of nine would just be a three. Now this one, I can also uh, cancel this out like I did the one above. Now I had a square root of X squared and that turned into an absolute value. So in this case is another one where I have to turn this into a absolute value of X right there. Now, if I put this together, that means I'm just gonna get three absolute value of X and then times the fifth root of 81 x to the fourth. So that one, there wasn't really a whole lot we could do as far as simplifying. This actually would be as far as we can go with that because we can't do anything with that radical uh, with an index of five.